Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, Sayyid, the binary code in the training I came across from the co course I took from Google IT support actually goes in line with your training. Thank you so much. Nice. <laughs> so, Google IT is, uh, is uh, on board. <laughs> Jake, it's all the computer guys. You know how many programmers are in Tariqah? Because the Tariqah Shaykhs, they're the programmers of heaven, right? So, there's the code. This is all written by code and if you understand this system then you're involved in Allah's coding. So awliya and those whom taught by awliyaullah they are involved in the programming of the heavens for our understanding and, and this is software. So if we don't understand these systems we don't understand the realities. So if you look in electronics and technology everything is based on binary. There's the slave unit and the master unit. One has to be on, one has to be off. One is going to broadcast the signal and all the other ones will be receiving the signal. And they can send out now to hundreds of thousands if not millions. And then peripheral understandings with drones, there'll be one master unit sending out to peripherals a signal and all of those will be acting based on one signal. We said even before they have many different uh, understandings and robotic systems that there's going to be one center core and sending out to peripherals the different commands. But all of that system is then going to be desired by the Divine, why? Because we're reaching a point in which Allah is anyone acting on their own will most likely be taken off of this earth by their bad desires and bad character. Whom will be surviving to be with Sayyidina Mahdi The ones whom learn to be off, why? Because he's the only one going to be on. But when he goes on and those whom train to be off, he can turn them all on. That's what's important, right? You need a, a legion whom are off. And if they train to be off, when that sultan turns on they all, bi izzatullah they're on. But now it's a bunch of cuckoos. Could you imagine everyone making their own thing out there in the field doing everything they want to do? That's not a system that's coming from the heavens. Means Allah's command and Allah's heaven. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Heavens on earth, he says, My kingdom is coming upon this earth. Allah's command is final. So then the people have to train in which to be off off to receive the signal. They see it now in technology. Every technology is based on that. It's just a matter of mankind who have free will. The greatest gift that Allah gave to us is free will. What does He want back? Your money? What are you going to do with your money? Give me back your will, right? After you gave your money, after you gave your time because you can never give your will first, those are liars. So I give you my will shake, no, put your money in the bucket first, put your time in the bucket first, give all of those easier things. Once you've signed up for that and you did that, you showed your time, you showed your, your commitment, you showed everything, of course your next is going to put your head on the block and say, give myself back to Allah I give my will to Allah and they surrender. At that state they're at what? Mawt qabl al mawt. That is the ultimate binary state that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq 
represents, he achieved that state and Prophet described, look at the one whom reached death before death and that's Naqshbandiyat al-Aliya is based on Sayyidina Abu Bakr as salam. So this is an immense reality. This reality is necessary for what's happening in dunya and for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi salam. Right? The matrix showed that. So the shaitan he has all his dominion and now they come on television and they see it, yeah something possesses us and we're, they all become shaitans. But Allah want is become nothing and my izzah and my might to dress you, not so you're all in different directions and each one making their own tafsir but come to be nothing and receive the bounty of Allah's might and majesty inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to train please on being off in professional life when the head takes over the head when we are pushed to show off? <coughs> yeah, anything that we do and we do in our spiritual world and spiritual practices it will carry over into the physical world. Right? <clears throat> so the ability to control one's tongue even if you're requested at work to talk and the demeanor at work, everything is going to be based on the same principles of humility, good manners, good characteristics and you can see it in certain people. So you can't say, no that's not in the workforce. There are people when they interview these people they're very quiet but when they talk the world listens to what they have to say. Because whatever this person says is very powerful and usually things happen like that in the financial markets and, and so they've, they've gained that status in which they don't talk much but when they talk everyone listens. So you can't say that, no that doesn't happen in the, in the material world, it does. This is nonsense gibberish in which the person feels they have to talk so much they actually demean themselves. And that will carry through and even their spiritual, they'll talk everywhere. So this training has tremendous benefit in the physical world. They take a path of humility and doesn't mean they're weak, it just means they don't show their strength. So that was like we, saw, we said, what was that in Star Wars? Was Yoda. That's why the shaykhs carry an asa. So don't look at a, a, as a man to be weak and old, he can lift the world up if he has to. But if you want to look like you, you, a buffalo carrying a car then you're the weakest of them because you know you're not going to compete with a buffalo, this is not tariqah way but that's the egoism way. They want to make themselves huge and look I can lift a car, I can eat a car too. <laughs> that's not the way of Allah the way is to say that I'm nothing. And Mawlana Shaykh would say, I'm the point zero, 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 one, two, four. 124,000 awliyaullah on this earth. He said, I'm the point zero, 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 zero. He reached the highest state of humility but he said, if, if Allah turns me on then nukht goes all the way to the other side, I have the power of 124,000 awliya and I can lift the earth is nothing for them. Because izzatullah is not something that can be understood. Allah says to the servant, do your fard then come to me with voluntary worshipness, I've become the eyes in which you see. What is the power of Allah giving you eyes? I become the ears in which you hear. You think they hear only the earth or into the seven heavens with Allah's hearing? So it means things that we can't even imagine but it's the reverse of dunya. So that when they train to be nothing then the wisdom of their work people will sit with them just to get inspiration of what's the next project because this is now an inspired person. Who gave them algebra? These people were in dark ages. Who gave them sciences, Ibn Sina? These were all awliya. So it means the one whom sits and trains and meditates and has a connected heart, everyone at work will need to hear what they have to say because they're a trained person when they speak it'll be inspirational. And now many of these Sufis in, in business are leading the way. But people just don't know who they are, 
they're the ones sitting in the science labs teaching these people what to do. There's one, they're teaching them that everything is in the eyes, right? He's teaching these modern people that everything is in the eyes. If you look to the eye of insan, you'll understand the entire being of that person. The, the, the deliverance of medicine will be more powerful through the eye than anywhere else on their body because of all of the capillaries and everything that's coming into the eye. But these are the knowledges of inspired people by awliya who will give them their sciences, give them their understanding of business. For God's sake we taught them math, they had V's and X's. Islam came and taught them what a nukht was. Without that there was no binary code. Could you have binary code with, with Roman numerals? V, X, 1, I? No. So it's a matter of Allah's gift to Islam and that the mu'min and Muslim they go back into their tafakkur and contemplation with good adab and inspirations from Allah they are the leaders of business and science and knowledges and realities, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Please forgive me for my ignorance and bad manners. Uh, is remaining off limited to staying silent only? No, we're not talking black and white. So you can never ask a question like that that is black and white. It's always with the hikmah and wisdom. Remaining off is a state of humility. We don't ever talk in, 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 in finite, where is this, is that, halal, haram, like this. The state of is it has to be understood with the, with the understandings of logic is that when we remain off is a state of humility. That there's times that to be silent, nobody's interested in what you have to say, so don't say it. There's time that you, you want to say something to show yourself, remain silent. There's times to talk less and not more. And this is all again, again Prophet gives to us from Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq Seven years he put a rock in his mouth and remained silent. Seven years and understanding Surat al-Baqarah. So it means the, the state of silence is not weakness. The state of silence is, has a tremendous amount of strength. And it's very difficult to achieve, so it's not something simple. But there are times in which you chime in and have something to say and there are other times that you catch yourself and saying, better I don't say anything because it's not going to go anywhere. And the people I'm about to say that to, they're not going to listen to anyway, so I waste it and stay quiet. So that, that becomes an art form in which to remain quiet, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam uh, This is from uh, Help Me. Um, can you please ask Sayyidi this question? I understand we need to put up with humiliation and take the reality that Allah was a gel has prescribed, prescribed for us. At what point do we fight back? For instance, if we were charged with a crime we didn't commit, are we to not hire a lawyer to defend our good name? What if we weren't charged with a crime but slandered viciously on the internet? And by speaking up, we could essentially prove the false nature of the claims. Do we just stay silent even though the damage is done and we're now in tariqah? Please forgive my ignorance and any answer is appreciated. <laughs> yeah, these, these examples will go on and on, so we can't go through the list of all these examples. Uh, everybody has their, their own understanding. But you know, you, you have three states. One is that you, you take a uh, eye for eye, what done to you, you can have the right to do back. Second state, when you're raised a little bit higher, you say, okay, damage done to me, I want some money. So I want to seek financial compensation. Third state is Allah asking them, turn your affairs over to me. I will recompense, meaning what? Then they must have a tremendous faith. If they don't have that faith 
and they don't have the actions that back it up, they have to know themselves, right? So somebody ripping other people off, they got ripped off, of course they're going to go fight over it because they're not hoping Allah is going to solve their issue because they're continuously harming other people. Everyone has to know the state in which they're in but these are the conditions Allah gave to us. You do as done to you, so they go and fight their cases. You go and ask for money for the damages that were caused to you. And those to whom they have a, a relationship with Allah at a higher state, they said, Ya Rabbi I'm going to just stay quiet on this one and you take my defense. And Allah will send from ways they never imagined if their relationship is good with Allah So you don't have to even talk, we'll take care of it and things happen and all of a sudden something comes in front of them or that person couldn't run very far and they had to appear before that person to resolve something. So Allah has ways that are unimaginable. So there's infinite amount of examples of, of this path but everyone has to based on you know who they are and where they are. If, if they're you know doing things on a continuous basis then no, better get an attorney because maybe Allah is not going to be sending you that type of relief because you're doing things that are, are causing difficulties to other people. But uh, you know this is a path in which to grow and to build our, fa our faith. When we build our faith and, and use these practices we reach a higher level of, of these difficulties. So you're a pious person or somebody working on yourself and somebody slanders you on the internet which is uh, very often the case for shaykhs. Don't ever reply, don't give anybody any, any credibility to even reply, Allah will take that person down. You didn't do anything, Allah will resolve the issue. So many shaykhs like that, they don't reply to anyone saying kooky things. Well, why, why do they have to? And if, if, they, if they become aggressive then the hadith of Allah is that I declare war against anyone who comes against my awliya. Why? Because we described in the tafsir two weeks ago that Allah is the wali of the mutaqeen. Waliul mutaqeen, Allah says, I'm the, the wali, I'm the, their caretaker of the mutaqeen. So if they know themselves that their practices inshaAllah have a sincerity Allah says, I'm watching over you, don't worry. But if they're not doing that then they're not under that category, then everybody to their understanding. But the main thing is to have good manners inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is there such a thing as backbiting people who passed away a long time ago? Backbiting people who passed away, yeah of course. Slandering the, the character of somebody, backbiting them, all of that, that the, the anytime we enter into that then our, our bad deeds are, are the any badness from that person will come onto us and any good deeds will be sent on to them. And the exchange you become bankrupt spiritually, so that those are, are difficult states of backbiting. And the only time backbiting is going to be pushed is when they start to backbite their shaykh. Allah is pulling their knowledge out of their reality. Because what Allah bestows upon you and the hasanat that Allah gives, Allah doesn't take away. But Allah can cause the depletion of your account. How? By backbiting. As soon as you backbite any hasanat you have will be lost. That's the only way to lose hasanat. So if you got good deeds, you do all these other sins, doesn't ever take away those good deeds. That light always stays in their heart and that's the immense gift from Allah But as soon as they start to talk bad, what happens? Those lights pour out and Prophet described, this is then one whom is bankrupted is they lost the lights and hasanats that Allah has given to them. So that's the one to be sort of precautious and very worrisome about is not to backbite people and not to talk bad about people, inshaAllah. 
Uh, a few people were asking these questions last week as well. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. What is the reality behind these really bad snowstorms happening nowadays? Is it a sign of heavy energies? Yeah, I think chaotic weather is the sign of the last days, rainstorms, snowstorms, floods, every part of the world is different. The snowstorm is only here, so it means just a, a time of emergencies and preparation, right? So every time something happens, a believer has to look to themselves and say that, are you prepared? Do you have food at home? Do you have a source of energy at home? Do you have uh, any cash and gold in case the, the banks are not working or you're just caught with the, the no, no sort of sign of belief? Belief is to understand dunya is dying, at any moment if it should you know kick into first gear and really die and the bank not open and markets not open and credit card and ATMs are not working and you relied all on that system. A sign of faith in all the awliya who train their students where you should have food, you should have a reserve in home for your food, you should have some money and cash set aside, you should have a power source. Now they have uh, instead of a whole generator for people they have uh, cell technologies and batteries that they can put in apartments. So you must have a source of some sort of power, some sort of oil lantern, some sort of protection so that if difficulty comes it's a sign of belief, Ya Rabbi I believed and then Allah inshaAllah expand it because you make one step Allah comes 99 steps. But if you didn't even make one step then that's a sign of uh, lack of belief. So we don't want to be caught with that type of difficulty. So all of these are signs, you know when the snow like that and it tips it a little bit more yeah, it could uh, freeze and knock out all the power lines, there won't be any power. You won't be able to get in your car, you won't be able to go out and, and get any food or any, any resources. A flood comes in certain areas and everything's wiped out or uh, some sort of a, a pulse energy hits the atmosphere and knocks out all the electricity. What would you do? So this is the world in which we live in and the believer lives a life of being prepared inshaAllah. And that's a sign of their faith and then Allah looks to them and grants them and signs off for them that they have faith and they live their life according to their faith inshaAllah. <clears throat> uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa um, How will Dajjal use this system of the malakut and will use it in a dark way in the world? How can we be able to see the difference? <clears throat> yeah, what we described on, on other talks is that he's a jinn and he's disguising himself as an insan and he's using the jinn world, not the mu'min jinn, nefarious spiritual beings to do his magic. So these are the signs of his magic. And that's why we described in our section of Surat Al-Kahf and the talks of uh, Surat Al-Kahf is not only to read Surat Al-Kahf but to be from Ashab Al-Kahf. And that's why the permission is to teach the tafakkur. When we teach the tafakkur and contemplation is you open up your spiritual eye. And as a result of your spiritual eye and this aqeedah and teaching that we are the people of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah If at any time they come and tell you just you know keep the La ilaha illallah and leave the rest, run. That our key to all reality, our key to all power, the key to all blessings is the love and the ishq of Muhammadun Rasulullah And they will take that key away and they have been doing that for the last hundred years with these different groups that, that are ruling the Muslim world. They keep taking out the importance of Muhammadun Rasulullah They started with uh, talking about the milad which is the single most important aspect of Islam because you don't have this Islam, you don't have the Qur'an, you don't have anything 
if not for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's like those games that when, when you were kids you build these stick and then they take each stick out until they see which one is going to tumble the whole project. So we know that that's their system, their system is going to take that key away of Muhammadun Rasulullah So that's why they teach, no, 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 keep yourself to be ashiqeen. That is your key, that is your protection, that is your love, that is the power that reaching to you. And as a result you keep with that energy and qudra from the heavens and malakut. Dajjal doesn't use malakut. Allah gives the izzat and permission to do the magic that He's going to do on earth and it's not from the angels. He revived the dead from the jinn and moved mountains from the jinn, nothing to do with angels. So this is not from the malakut, this is by izzatullah Allah is giving shaitan in Qur'an. You have the permission with izzatullah, izzat rasul wa izzat mu'mineen. So with that permission they're going to do magic on this earth and they have been doing magic and that's their whole symbolisms and all their practices is about magic. But the one whom has malakut and the heavenly power that that's not uh, anything comparable that they have the might and majesty of Allah supporting them. So that's the importance that that can't be duplicated and, and that, that can't be interfered with. InshaAllah. Uh, meditation question, uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what is the meaning of real bugs bothering during meditation? Real bugs, you're the spiritual bugs, real bugs. <laughs> anytime you're making a, a, an energy and anytime you're, you're doing energy practices there's going to be things happening. Now the energy could be agitating different physical creatures because the energy is real. You're starting to put a vibration and connect your heart. So you may start to notice you know different physical creatures in, in different areas. And then the spiritual energy that the energies that manifest in your mind as like bugs and, and different agitations to stop you from meditating, stop you from trying to make your connection. This is all about the practice and interference and this is with Izzatullah, Izzat Rasul wa Izzat mu'mineen it's a part of the practices. This is by a permission, anyone whom's sitting saying, Bismillah, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitani Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem intending to make my meditation and connect my heart, then Allah is going to test them. So all of this interference, all of these difficulties so that to see if they're able to connect their heart, keep consistent with connecting their heart, it's not the easy thing to do, it's the most difficult practice to do. And once they can master that, that's what we describe, then their salah has power. Because if they can't meditate then imagine thinking your salah has any power. You can't focus for five seconds sitting down how you think your salah is in focus. So actually the tafakkur gives the power for the salah. The one whom is able to reach their tafakkur and contemplation, able to reach that connection then imagine then their salah what type of power it has because it's connecting. You know the, the, they're able to begin to open their heart, open to feel the energies, open to, to feel these realities. Now their salah, their practices are becoming alive. So that has a tremendous bounty. So you don't think shaitan is going to allow that? He's not saying, oh look they're going to meditate, that's wonderful. No because if this person reaches their reality it's going to cause problem for shaitan and it becomes untouchable for shayateen. That's not something they're interested in. So then tafakkur becomes very difficult. And that's why there has to be so much training that you have to make madad, you have to have the taweezes, you have to sort of call upon the, the, the madad of the, of the shaykhs, the madad of what's been written for the, the shajara and calling upon the chain because we need a lot of support to achieve that reality because shaitan's not happy. So that has a, a immense significance, it's definitely not something easy. 
and uh, it's, it's tremendously important. Alhamdulillah I get a lot of comments that people love the question and answers. So thank everybody for asking all these questions because a lot of people in the audience they're listening. Remember these videos go out to anywhere from 6 to 10,000 people now. They'll catch it on, on rebroadcast within the next couple of hours and immediately shoot up. So they're listening and, and emailing and, and putting in the comments that there are questions that are coming into their hearts and they're all timely because we have one Lord and that Lord is inspiring everyone from this station and on this broadcast in their hearts. So many people are inspired to say, oh I feel difficulty, what should I be doing? Well, you should be having power sources, you should be having food, you should be having supplies. So they understand in their heart that some sort of a panic is coming, some sort of difficulty is coming. They have the same questions on how to connect, how to… to that's why we started off with how to negate yourself to be nothing because this whole world is built on you being something. So we're competing with you know Facebook telling you, go live. And then person thinking, you, you watch these things and who's this guy? Is this some kid in the middle of nowhere in a village is going live because shaitan is not leaving even one person out from his misery. So in a world in which we're trying to be and to, to make ourselves negate and to be nothing, to reach to the Divine Power, shaitan is aggressively saying, no, 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 make, make yourself something. So the, this is the same signal broadcasting to everyone's heart and when they hear the questions they, they have a tremendous relief because they feel like, oh this was answered, this was what I was thinking, I was thinking this exact thing, so alhamdulillah. That people inspired to ask the questions are great questions, so alhamdulillah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the source of heavenly himmah that helps the seeker to push against the heaviness of our four enemies of the self? What is the fuel of the soul? The madad. That's the whole teaching of the qudra and the energy. We have the, the book on, on, on energy, what's the book called? That's meditation, now you have to buy two of the energy book. What's the energy book called? No, the energy book is, is called the, the angelic what? In pursuit of angelic power, yeah. And this reality is the meditation book. So the qudra and the energy is, is the reality of all that we've been teaching in the pursuit of angelic power. That's the whole of this practice. So yeah, that you, the only way to achieve an energy is to ask for support. Didn't we talk about the, the, the quicksand? When you go to the masjid, with the, the regular people, regular communities, the, the guy in the audience says, Shaykh, uh, I have sins and what should I do to stop them? He gets up and says, then make istighfar and he reads a du'a and said, make istighfar and finished. And that's ridiculous because the concept of sins is that you fell into quicksand. So imagine we're on a path in a desert, you stepped into quicksand and every time you step into quicksand you know that if you move you go faster down. So the more you agitate in quicksand the faster you go down. So somebody just making istighfar, how would that energy stop them from all the things that they're doing? all the energy they're producing, the same things they're doing on a daily basis, how would that stop them just by making istighfar and not having that sin again the next day? The istighfar, <laughs> shaitan is happy, the istighfar is you ask Allah's forgiveness for what you did. Didn't mean you're not going to do it tomorrow <laughs> shaitan is not uh, on vacation. He said, okay great you ask Allah's forgiveness but here we go again tomorrow. And then the person goes again, the awliya know that, that's a ridiculous answer because they don't believe in, in ihtiba, wajib al-takhleed, they don't believe in, in following guidance. So what Allah knows of our creation is that you guys are on a journey and in your journey 
you're with a shaykh and the shaykh he has a rope and when you're on this journey as soon as somebody falls into quicksand what happens? They need somebody to throw a rope to them. But you can't have your friend throw a rope because he's probably in quicksand also because he's in the same problem you are, he's also sinning. So you can't call your friend and say, oh man I have this horrible uh, desire and I do all these sins and what should I do? He said, make a stick fly. <laughs> that person also doing all those things. I mean he's also deep in quicksand telling you something to do. But what Allah wanted from, them, from us is what? Hold tight to the rope of Allah and don't tafarraq, don't separate from them. So these people of hub and love, they have a rope holding to the heart of Prophet Habl. And as a result this love they have for Prophet is a rope and they throw that rope out to the students every time they fall in difficulty and they say, hold tight to this, do your madad, make your connection, do these wazifa, do these awrads and then they start to teach. Oh yeah, yeah, stop eating those foods that you're eating, it has a very bad energy. Fast food energy, fast food and somebody in, in, in um, junub is sitting there making your hamburger and fries, of course he's throwing every type of horrific energy on that food and you're eating it up and enjoying it and, and becoming sick. So the shaykh has all of these teachings, he's sending a rope to the student and he's not in the quicksand and he's lifting them out. And that's why Allah gave for us is to follow, follow those guides, keep within the turuqs, follow guidance. It means whom are guided are rightly guided, those whom Allah did not guide have no guidance. So it means that Allah sends people to guides because they hold a rope from the heart of Prophet because their bayat was real. They took their bayat, they took the hand of Prophet Allah's hand upon that hand means now there's a rope on them. And any student that asking for help that rope is reaching to them and that's why they're teaching. That you're all in quicksand, if you think you're going to do a, a wazifa, you're going to make istighfar and pop yourself right out, you have the wrong understanding. So what you do is make your madad, ask for more energy to come, more madad to come, more power to come. Then they say, make this zikr, make this awrad, go out and do this charity, all of these actions are pulling the student out of that difficulty and taking that bad desire away. The more they make madad what happens? More of these lights are reflecting onto them and burning away that satanic energy. Why? Allah described Prophet shahidan, mubashiran wa nadiran. The shaykh is a representation of Prophet shahidan means he sees your, what you're doing. If Prophet is, is nazar is upon you means he's sending a light to stop those energies, stop these desires, stop this characteristic that you're doing. Mubashiran <coughs> these lights are now flowing to the student who is making madad, the student who's going and giving charity, the student who's making their istighfar, their wazifas and their zikrs. More than their istighfar, they're doing all the recitations that the, the Naqshbandi awrad has. And this mubashiran means these tajalis dress them and now to lift them out of that and say, you know I don't feel that desire to do that, I feel kind of ashamed to do, I feel Prophet presence, I feel this love and I feel ashamed to do those things. I don't want to talk harsh like that, I don't want to hurt people like that. It's not that you make by yourself istighfar, Allah wanted everybody to be in a community. It wasn't supposed to be a solo mission where everybody just go off on your own and then you're going to reach paradise but on your own but this was a fellowship that, what? Kunu ma sadiqeen ittaqullah, have a consciousness, wa kunu ma sadiqeen and keep the company of truthful servants truthful in their deeds and in their actions. And that fellowship of power, they're reaching towards the, the, the Lord of power 
and the, the realities of Allah And that becomes the reality. So every time they're in difficulties make a madad. <clears throat> you email, oh I'm doing this and this, okay no problem, start making your madad, start giving charity. You know the zakat and sadaqah wipe out these sins so that your account is not negative every night. If you're going to do something nasty and bad and inappropriate immediately give sadaqah before the night ended. You have to balance your account, it's accounting. You know if you don't know good accounting you'll be bankrupt in about two weeks. Spiritual accounting is much more important. In the morning wake up and say, I have like what? You slept good maybe with wudu you have 10 points. Now go out throughout the day and then start writing your sayat. I did this one, I did this one, I did this one, I did this, I talked bad, oh this one, I did this. And you make an accounting of yourself and you say, I got oh 45 sins today. But before that night ends give sadaqah because the one sadaqah has 10 in Allah's value. Allah rig the game for us to win. So if you do 10 hasanats those 10 take away 10. So you do four good deeds, it counts as 40, you balanced out from the sins. So then do 50 and get 50 points so that you're up, you're up 10 not down 40. So it's a, very, it's a very simple. If somebody and that's what we call muhasaba, accounting. When we account for ourselves, we say, I know that oh I don't think it was a very good day, I argue with a lot of people, I'll give my sadaqah. So that my account will be positive at night. I'm not continuously every night sleeping negative, sleeping negative, sleeping negative. Oh great at the end of the week you're bankrupt. So nobody runs their business like that and you shouldn't run your soul like that. So Allah gave us all of these realities for us to achieve. And that's why then the muhasaba, accounting, tafakkur and, and contemplating inshaAllah. Allah dress everyone, bless everyone, thank everyone for their questions and participation and alhamdulillah we'll continue tomorrow night inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.